Hello, everyone! Welcome, welcome, one and all, to, uh, one, our brand new overlay. But also, uh, hello and welcome to our, uh, weekly Scion 2nd edition game. I am Simon at WanderingDM, and I will be, uh, jamming our, uh, game today. We have a lot of returning faces, um, one who we haven't seen in a while. And she jumps so far that she slid across the kitchen floor. And that is morning. And one in the <laughs> distance. <laughs> uh, without further ado, let's uh, go and uh, introduce all of our players for today. We'll recap what happened last week. And uh, then we will begin with, you know, consequences of your actions and, you know, stuff like that. So, um, I'll do, I'll do a strange order since morning isn't there. I'll start with the person in the bottom right corner of the overlay and we'll go around clockwise. So we will begin with Hannah. Woo! I'm Hannah, Hannah Art on Twitter, and, uh, I use she, her pronouns. And for this game, I'm playing Kieran Kearney, son of Loki. He uses he, him pronouns. Up next, we have, uh the mysterious figure who appeared at the very end of last week's episode. Uh, Robert, welcome back. Like a bad penny, I'm bound to come back. I am Ro K Kentucky Hawkeye, uh, quite sometimes known just as Hawker Hawkeye here on Twitch, and I'll be playing Finbar Odubda, professor of ancient literature, and more importantly, Scion of Ogma. And there's a few things that I will have to uh, catch you up to speed, Finbar, as to what's been happening on the Green Isles um, while the rest of the group were uh, sauntering about the rest of the world. <clears throat> but before we go into that, up next we have Anino. What's going on, everyone? My name is Anino. I use he pronouns, as does my character, Eddie Kele, the scion of Sun Wukong, the Monkey King, and uh, instigator of the group. And, uh, yeah, so we have to figure out who we're going to swindle next. <coughs> and on the uh, top of the overlay, we'll start with Lynn. Hi. Hey, I'm uh, Lynn, um, Flying Cirrus on Twitter, um, she, her, and I am playing uh, D. Higa. Sign of uh, Inari, also she, her. And last but not least, we have returning with us this week, Renee. Hi, I'm Renee Rhodes. I am back playing Morning, just, you know, sauntering around the world. Both Morning and I use she, her pronouns. And I am so thrilled to hop back today with everyone here. It is amazing to be back with this group of players. Oh, also, I should preface, I do have a very distracting chaos kitten about three months old who may make an appearance in the background on the desk or anywhere. I may also have to step away to deal with her. <laughs> this is Kiri. <laughs> um, so, before we begin, um, I think we'll do, we'll recap last week. Then we'll catch Finbar and our viewers, and also our other players, because no one... Well, I think some of you have been to Ireland in-game before, um, but things have happened uh, and uh, before you arrived and after you arrived, uh, after you left, I should say. So, of course, um, no one here, aside from me, knows what is uh, going on, so it'll be a surprise for most everyone, but we'll begin with uh, a recap of our last session. Who would like to recap your amazing exploits in in Japan? What did y'all do? Because I can... I, oh, no, go ahead. Yeah, I, I mean, you could say this was kind of D's fault. Um, hey! We were just so, following D. We were just following D. D had um, had a uh, obligation to fulfill, 
in Japan. And, uh, well. Let me guess, Eddie like two little Karen kids that are away from the parents, they got bored and you got into trouble. Well, we didn't necessarily run away. It's just that we weren't allowed on the mountain to watch these uh, training in progress. So, you know, Karen and Eddie decided to um, go exploring. Started off with exploring Japanese convenience stores and uh, getting all the snacks that they could get. And then, uh, you know, celebrating Dee's success when she uh, finished her trials. And that's when we met um, Yoshi, the scion of Hatchiman, while we were hanging out in a arcade. And, uh, apparently, uh, Yo Yoshi could not, um, could not uh, acquire a certain relic. Uh, artifact that would be a gift from his um, his uh, patron and uh, well that was a challenge that Karen and uh, Eddie could not uh, turn down so there was a plan hatched to rob the a Japanese museum of a very ancient set of mystical armor a lot of it was improvised um, there wasn't a whole lot of like actual violence, violence, but uh, there was certainly a lot of chaos and uh, property damage. And no violence. Nobody got hurt. Nobody got seriously hurt. And I'd say that it was more an act of kindness, out of you know the goodness of our hearts for a fellow scion that we took on this undertaking. I, I don't know about challenges, but um, I'd say well, it we was, were good it was people. A challenge. It was a challenge. Um, it was a we, challenge. We had, we, we had to figure out, well, you had to figure out how to break into the case that could not be shattered. And, uh, you know, in the meantime, uh, Dee had her hands full with trying to uh, convince the spirit of the museum to not completely ruin their plans. So, um, and then we also had to deal with Yoshi's very bad acting because, uh, you know, uh, he wasn't very good at the whole causing a distraction thing. He uh, he put his talents of act his acting chops to uh, to work, um, and uh, I mean, look, he he stalled the guards as long as he could. One by faking a heart attack, then by faking utter confusion, and just getting in their way. Um, but you did manage to escape with the armor after all. Um, there was. A lot of pain coming from Kieran's attempts at breaking the display case. Um, there was a, a very epic, shall I say, standoff between Eddie and the guards. Um, and then the three of you went back. Well, Dee and Kieran teleported back first to uh, the cottage. And it took some time for uh, Eddie to reappear as um, he needed to act as an Uber driver for uh, for Mr. Yoshi as, um, well, Yoshi's now wanted by the authorities and uh, needs to flee Japan ASAP, but could not get to the airport in time. When Eddie reappeared at the house, he had with him a plethora of Pokemon merch, that seemed to have materialized in his hands. Um, no, no, he, he actually <laughs> paid for his merchandise. He took oh, a nice oh, okay. stop at the Pokemon Center in Tokyo before he teleported back home. And uh, he got a uh, almost life-size uh, Lapras doll for uh, morning to decorate her room with. Yeah. The you morning know, hasn't just, seen it yet. Right. <laughs> Uh, because when the group arrived, so that's what we did, uh, Morning was still asleep, and uh, D, Eddie, and Kieran, along with um, Winnie and JD, decided to uh, head to the uh, Thirsty Oak. Was that the name, or did I get it wrong? No, the Tasty Oak, not Thirsty, the Tasty Oak. And um, to, to have, like, a meal and, and hang out and talk about what was 
you know, what happened in Japan and what their next uh, moves were going to be and all of that. And it is there that uh, after, I think it was about an hour that you were there uh, talking about fate and, and free will and, you know, very light, small talk. Holy! D totally did not bring down the bring down the the mood. <laughs> I mean, you ask the real questions, and as fate would have it, the door to the bar opened, and uh, seen through the light of day, from outside was the shape of one Finbar Odupta, who would come all the way from. Ireland back to Nyanic in America. But before that, let's just rewind the clock uh, a little. And uh, Professor Odupta. So, after the events with uh, Wolf Security at the uh, Nyanic University, you went back to Ireland uh, after settling things with Professor Morgan and uh, went back there to research, do some more research uh, with, uh, what was her name again? Namain. Mm-hmm. Um, Namain, yeah. To, um, uh, to, to look into other scions, to try to find more information. Now that you knew that there were, you know, five of you in Nyanic, um, there should be more elsewhere. Um, and so uh, you went back to the Emerald Isle and uh, began your research. A few weeks later, you were visited by uh, your friends from Nyanic. Um, they sort of hurriedly explained that they had a house, a magical house that allowed them to basically travel instantly across the whole world um, and they were in Wales to meet with Morning's dad that very morning <laughs> and uh, took a uh, ferry to Ireland to see you um, and uh, also to ask you about what, the, what, what was wrong with Ireland and here's what you discovered in all that time ever since you returned to Ireland there has been this weird uh, a feeling of malaise that would not affect anyone else that anyone else that you've seen or or uh, questioned only yourself and this this odd sensation of of impending doom uh, was exacerbated the day that you began to see through the clouds one enormous red eye just staring down at the island. No one can see it. After a few days of it being in the sky, um, and it is there day and night, um, it even shines at night, brighter than many of the stars. Um, None of the mortals have seen it. None of the papers have talked about it. No news report. Nothing, not even these, you know, the fringe conspiracy websites that you and uh, Naman would visit to try to find, you know, clues on some of the, the divine beings in the world. Like, no one. No one's talked about it. No one's made any mention of it. It seems like only you can see it. And, uh, you know, as as a professor, as an academic, you did some more, you know, dug some more research, uh, figured out also that the eye, while you can see it, let's say, on, on media, like pictures or videos, you cannot, even if you show it to someone else, they cannot see it. Even if you were to point at it, even if you were to... to Like, I mean, the only way they could potentially see it is if you were to draw over a picture, they would see your drawing. But on the original, there is nothing, not even like a cloud shaped as an eye or anything like that. You dug deep in mythology and uh, 
figured out, at least from what you have found so far, that this would be the Eye of Baylor. Um, Baylor is a, a very old um, Fomorian. It's back to the way, Agent. Yes. Um, he was the leader of the Fomorian, and he was described as a giant with a large eye that wreaks destruction when he opens it. Um, Baylor is killed eventually by Lu, the god of light. Um, Baylor himself was a very angry creature. Um, basically set, like dead set on destroying Ireland. Um, he could be akin to almost Suter from uh, Norse mythology. Um, maybe even in, in other uh, religions or other myths, um, Maybe like the destructive power of the sun. Um, he had apparently a stronghold in um, in Ireland called Tormor on Tory Island. Um, you went there just to see. It's a rocky outcropping in the middle of well not in the middle of the ocean but like it it juts out from the island and uh and that's it uh it's a tiny tiny island um in the north of ireland um called um and i will probably butcher it but torak in uh in gaelic t-o-r-a-i-g-h um, and uh, you know you you were expecting something at least it's just a rocky outcropping in the middle of the water there is a way to walk there it's very precarious um, but there was nothing else no like magical shimmering aura or, or you know something else that only you could see uh, it's with a lot of imagination, you could squint hard enough to think you saw some, like, foundation of some sort, of, like, a structure in the stone, but it's probably just the imagination of, you know, so many people running wild over generations. Um, nothing magical there. The eye never stopped looking. It is not looking necessarily at you. It is fixed. It doesn't move. It doesn't blink. Um, but it's been making you increasingly unwell. Uh, just, you know, this, this malaise turned into anxiety and stress. And uh, Naman suggested you... Take some time off. Take a vacation from Ireland. Go somewhere else. See if, you know, if you still feel that way when you're farther away from the eye. Um, she cannot see it, but she will keep an eye out haha, on anything strange that might occur. If ever. Um, and she'll notify you, you know, the moment she hears about something almost supernatural uh, happening. She'll give you a call immediately. But otherwise, you know, she did what she could to try to reassure you that um, she had everything under control. You left Ireland to go back to Nyanic because at this point, why not just, you know, Talk about it with others. Maybe the rest of um, the godlings had heard of um, 
um, of something similar happening elsewhere. Um, you landed in America. And the moment you got off the plane, the entire feelings of anxiety and everything just disappeared. At the very least, the, the, the majority of it, like, I'm not Finbar, I'm not going to tell you, you no longer feel anxious about what's happening. Like, Finbar can be as stressed as you want, but there is no, like, supernatural or outside force forcing this anxiety upon you. This feeling of, of doom. The paranoia of feeling like I'm constantly being watched is now gone. Yeah. Though you still, like, I mean, I don't know how Finbar feels about knowing that there's something watching, like, let's say, the number one enemy of Ireland, mm -hmm. keeping an eye on the island. That's, meh. That's up to you. But here we are on a sunny afternoon. In the tasty oak. You open the door and you notice in a, uh, like, along the wall on your left, closer to the bar, uh, sitting around a table, five, well, four familiar figure and one that you have no idea who that is. Um, he's a man, or at least, um, a man presenting long, like, bed hair, uh, unkempt stubble, just dressed in, um, you know, old washed out jeans and a, uh, like a, a plaid shirt, we'll say. Um, he looks, even by just looking at him for a second, like the first word that comes to your mind is slacker. He doesn't look like the kind of person who really puts any effort into anything. Where is, you know, whether it's dressing up taking care of himself or, you know, entertaining others at the table. Um, he has just brought back a pitcher of beer uh, as you uh, saw all of that. And of course, the moment the door opened, both D, Kieran and Eddie turned around to see Finbar. So, I haven't been gone that long, and I see you've already found a replacement for me, as I walk up to the table. Connie, pull me the finest pint this side west of Dublin. As you wish, Professor. <sighs> hey, Professor. I just killed oh. the conversation, good time, so uh, what, if you feel like revi reviving it, sure, why don't you take a seat. I grab a chair and pull it up. So, from what I've been hearing from the Mari guys, already have some pretty good exploits going since I took since I had to go back. Uh, you could say that. <laughs> We've been busy, trying to keep busy. So I hear. Uh, Winnie leans over and says, um, they've taken care of the lupine problem. Yes, so I've heard. I heard they were effective in ways I couldn't have imagined. Well, I have to thank you, too, for, you know, helping out. Saving my, my life. pleasure, Milas. My pleasure. I'm kind of an old romantic in that way. Whenever I see a damsel in distress, I just got to help out. 
Or then no. Then you should have been there when, um, uh, when it all went down, and from what I heard, um, and she turns to Kieran, someone set themselves ablaze. Do you know who that could have been? <clears throat> oh, that was a slight exaggeration of the events. Well, what's the old phrase? If you play with fire... I like that one better. Burned, but <laughs> I'm fairly certain that Kieran here cannot be burned. Aye, not yet. Not yet. Well, let's hope we never find out. Physically, sure. <laughs> so, I see the rest of you here. Is, where is morning? Is she okay? Oh, she, uh, she was asleep. Let me... Um, let me text her. And I think that's a perfect point to move the camera over to uh, the cottage in the woods where Morning, sleeping in her room, is awoken by the sound of her smartphone. Um, what does the text say? Um, it just says, are you up? She uses full <laughs> sentences. Yes, yes, okay. Um, uh, morning will text back and just say, I am now. Aren't you here in the cottage? <laughs> um, and she replies, we went for a... Uh, drink in a chat at the Tasty Oak. Your old friend, the professor, is here. Then bar! All caps. Um, and then a uh, few minutes later, uh, morning appears. Out of nowhere. Um, well, I mean, out of the door. But yeah. Yeah. Um, all dressed up, ready to go. Morning opens the door to the bar. A few people again, you know, turn around, look at you, uh, go back to their, um, to their business. Um, the moment she sees you, Winnie waves and motions for you to, uh, to come sit. I run over and, uh, fling my arms around Finbar's neck. How are you? Oh, I, I would return the the hug and say, I'm doing fine, Milas. How are you holding up? How's the transition to this world coming for you? Very good. I'm a warrior queen and a social media influencer now. You've created... I, l I look over to the others. You've already created a monster. I don't Both know buttons. what you're talking about. <laughs> I won't lie and say I didn't have a part in it, so... Well, I mean, there's certain aspects you have to kind of, you know, get up to, get up to speed on. Well, it looks like things are going better here than they are back home, I'll say that. Oh, that, that oh doesn't sound is great. the sky still wrong? Yes, and I figured I have determined what's going on out there. Oh. I don't know if you're familiar with it or with it or not, Morning. Your mother might be able to tell you better, more accurately than I could. But it appears the eye of Baylor has is is focused in on our Emerald Isle. Is the sun still on the wrong side? Yes. Yes. Hmm. I don't like that. 
Could that have anything to do with the garden? Anything's possible. What's happening there? There's a darkness at the edge of it. That they don't know what it is, but anyone who's claimed by it, their soul is just gone. I don't know if they're directly related or not, but after the things I've seen with y'all, I'm not taking anything for <laughs> granted. But I could if, talk to my dad about it. But if Baylor is trying to come back or if someone's taking taking control of a part of him, that can't be good. And I relate to Eddie D and Kieran and what I know of the history of Baylor and what the, and the significance of his of the eye. It's not good. I don't know what it means or what or who may be behind it, but it's none the least disturbing. Because if the eye is looking on the island, who knows if whoever is looking through the eye has the power that the eye was of legend to have had. Hmm. So, I'm guessing this is something that uh, you want to address in some uh, more aggressive fashion. Well, I, Nama and I have beaten the books as far as research is concerned and we haven't been able to get much further than what I've than what I've told you all nobody else can see it at least nobody who's a mere mortal even when I even when we take photographs of it and the and it's clearly t clear to me in the photograph it's there Nama can't see it nobody else can see it only me and I assume I probably have a copy or two of the photo with me. Probably, yeah. JD JD would ask to like, can and I, I pull one? and I and I pull it out and I pass it around. Cool. Can they see it? Yep, everyone can see the giant eye. Um, imagine imagine the eye of Sauron in the Lord of the Rings, but it's very much a circle it's not like an elongated um like oval shaped eye it really is just a, like almost like if a sphere was poking out of the sky oh i, I can okay. see how this is disturbing yeah that doesn't look good uh, no no this is freaking ominous i mm-hmm Great. Giant eyes. It's... I, I mean, it doesn't bode well. That's all I can say. The really? Oh, up. yeah. There's a great mountain joint trying to eat Ireland, and you say it doesn't bode well. Where's the rest of them? The rest of them was supposedly destroyed. In the battle. Supposedly he was totally destroyed. But it I, looks like looks like something may have gotten away unless someone saved something as a souvenir. And now they're using it for their own purposes, for their own jollies, or someone else has gotten a hold of it. That's the only three options I can think of at this point. Well, I mean, they certainly don't care about not being seen. <laughs> and it makes me wonder, is he doing it to draw people like us, people like me, out? Since we're the only ones that seem to be able to see it. 
So far, anyway. At the moment, anyway. And even worse, can you imagine the panic would happen if all of a sudden everyone could see it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I suppose that would probably put a dent in everything that we're building and trying to uh, work for. Precisely. Should I go talk to my dad about this? I mean, he might know something. There might be updates on the garden. It's been, what, a week since I spoke to him last? Yeah, about about a week. Is there... Well, what would your next move be, Finbar, before you had uh, run into us? Well, I've been to the site where he supposedly lived and came from. The next spot, I imagine, would be maybe going to the site of the battle where he was slain to see if there's any, any remaining clues there. After all this time, you never know. Where would that be? See. Let me look here. It was. Oh, let's see. I'm trying to look here on the folk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> trying to look here on the folklore wiki real quick to see where the battle at site was. Uh, the battle against the Baylor. Yeah. Um, that was. Oh, that would be in. That was probably maybe in Kana. Uh, the Fort I, of Rothbrissi. I remember. Maybe. So off the top of my head, I remember that it was a massive battle because Lou. Lou blinded Baylor, and that meant that made the Fomorian lose the battle. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, attacked by his own grandson. Yeah, it's the Battle of Magturid. Yeah. So, Mag, whatever Mag, yeah, we'd have to go to Magturid. That's the location according to the legend and lore, where he was, where he was blinded slash slain. Um, I mean, I wouldn't mind making that trip. I don't have anything else to do. You can teach me how to take pictures. Um, I mean, I can take selfies, but like, I've been looking at these, uh, these, these, um, Finbar, they're, they're like videos, uh, but they, they're, um, they teach you how to do things like, um, Oh, these ins those instructional things on like on the YouTube and things yes, like that. Yes, yes, YouTube tutorials. Yes, on um on photography and framing. Because if I'm going to be a social media influencer, I can't just take selfies all the time. Um, and I feel like that would be a beautiful place to take some pictures. I would love to take some pictures of my dad's grave. It can't be far, right? Oh, sure. It sure it can't be more than two or three provinces away. Um, you mean from Magturid to, uh, to Wales? To Wales, yeah. Uh, let me... Oh, that would only be about Hop, half an island leap. and another quarter of the, uh, of the next island over. It's, it's, it's a short yeah. trip. We took the ferry last time. Um, let me, let me Google. We don't really need quickly. to take ferries anymore. Oh, that's true. I can run across the water now. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. well, On your well, own no. or by using midnight? Both. Convenient. I know. What I meant to say is, is that uh, we essentially can teleport anywhere in the world at a moment's notice. Oh, that's oh, really? true. That's nice and convenient. It is. 
Be cheaper than you keep continuing using Aer Lingus, that's for sure. <laughs> I don't know what that is. That's the major airline coming out of Ireland. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. At any those rate, big, uh, those big tubes with wings that you see in the air. I just need to like diversify my content. And Morning like looks at Winnie and D to make sure that she's like using the right terminology. Um, and we've been in the same place. I didn't make it to Japan with everyone else. Uh, I mean, that's okay. We had a great time. And there is like a, a picture of, uh, her most recent picture on Instagram is, uh, TikToks in the background, some popcorn on the, a bowl of popcorn on the table in the cabin and just like her and Winnie holding hands. Um, so you can only see the hands and the popcorn in the video in the picture, but she's very proud of it. Um, and then, uh, but like most of the pictures have been cabin related, you know? The very I mean, rustic route know. you've been taken. But, uh... Well, since Kana is... Where well, I is the province I grew up in. It won't be hard for us, for me to show you around there at all. Since I'd also I say that in, I was born in County Mayo. Morning's following is slightly growing, mostly because of the engagement that posts with Midnight get. Oh, and the sword. Any like sword tricks that she does, videos and stuff like those are those are. Yeah, that that can go viral pretty quickly. Yeah. Women with swords. Yeah. And she's a pretty little woman with a really big sword. So, like, it's just a fun <laughs> dynamic. It's a fun... Um, I can't... You're the cool lass with the claymore they're talking about, huh? Yes. I have a big sword. And she turns around and it sure is just, like, on her back. <laughs> well then, I suppose there's, there's, there's really no point in hiding it. We just decided that we should uh, embrace it. But um, at any rate, uh, so they made me a Twitter. They made you a Twitter, and now you've got everybody else's hearts a Twitter. I imagine. <laughs> I hope so. They they give me little hearts. JD looks at uh, a D at the mention of uh, Morning having a Twitter and he says, and do you think the fates aren't going to have fun with that? We'll see. I, I Why you to rain down everything? She's having fun. Oh, you're worried about the fates, are you? I mean, there's no, there's no real changing morning. She's just going to do whatever she wants. It's uh, more of us trying to take a preemptive approach and, uh, you know, utilizing it as cover, embracing it, so to speak, so that uh, you know the rest of us don't, um, well, don't face as much scrutiny. Exactly. But uh, I don't know if you know this, but uh, we are now. Um, the uh, C-suite of a uh, security firm, a uh, multi-million dollar security firm. And uh, I don't know if you're looking for a side hustle, but we could probably uh, work out a role for you if you are interested in some uh, you know, additional income and benefits. This queen something or other, I think the mom was mentioning. Queen's Guard, yeah, we're in the process Queen's of Guard. doing That's, a merger. That was it, yeah. Yeah, we're in the process of doing a merger and acquisition of uh, Wolf Security. Ah. Best way to take care of the enemy is, is either destroy it or absorb it, one or the other. Not the best strategy. We did both. <laughs> oh, also, I'm the queen. Figurehead. Yes. Very appropriate. All right, so... I suppose if you need someone in helping with 
the administrative end or the archi and archival oriented kind of stuff or just researching who's who the customers what the customers need i'm sure i could fit that into my schedule all right well and uh, uh eddie just checks his watch um well in order to sort of finalize the deal and transfer full benefits of uh being within our little uh circle um we're going to need to take a road trip up north, upstate New York. Well, then, let's go see this new headquarters of yours. Uh, we'll go there, but uh, we're kind of waiting for another um, person to join us as well. The guy with my... the... Uh, the... Okay, I get uh, it. Uh, yeah. JD downs the rest of his, his beer, uh, puts the, the glass back on the table and says, well, if you're looking for me, I'll be back at the house. I bid you all a good day. I've got stuff to do. What, what do you have to do? Stuff. Yeah, but like you, you know, stuff. stuff. He, he turns like one last time to Eddie as he's about to go through the door and says, important stuff. Well, uh, at least hang a sock on the doorknob, okay? <laughs> and with that, he disappears, um, leaving just the five of you six with Winnie. So, um, that, that person you're waiting for, Eddie, uh, Winnie asks, is he, are you going to make him come all the way to the house? Uh, yes. So I had a sort of agreement with him that, uh, if we obtained his, uh, item of interest, uh, he would, uh, provide some tutoring for our warrior queen in training over here. See, I'm not so good with the swords. Um, my style is a little bit... Uh, uh, well, it, it's a little more chaotic, and uh, I feel that Morning would benefit from someone who had a much more um, direct and to-the-point way of swordplay. Hmm. So, how is he going to get there? Well, he's supposed to be meeting us here in Niantic. Um, I put him on a plane before uh, I got back home. But well, that's going to be a while, though. It is. Um, yeah, that's a pretty good link, flight length. All the way from there over to here. That's at least, what, a 10 to 12 hour flight? Or at least an 8 hour. No, it's, uh, it's definitely more 18 to 20. Yeah, looking very quickly. Um, <laughs> I mean, I see one here at 26 hours. It's not great. It's, it's bad. It's a bad flight. Regardless, oh. regardless yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, American Airline does it with no stops at 13 hours. That's still a... Still okay. not great. <laughs> yeah, it, it's he probably took the quickest, even if it was more expensive, just to get out of the country as fast as possible. But that means you still, you know, once he lands in New York, then he get, needs to take a cab all the way to Niantic. So you can you can say, like, at least two days before he shows up. Two days, that's enough time to go to, to Ireland, Wales, talk to your da morning, you think? I think so. We can get places pretty quickly. Yeah. We certainly don't take a plane. Plane travel is not that great. I honestly 
not interested. Like, I'm interested in a lot of things. I even enjoyed the bus. But, um, not interested in a plane. Well, that's fine. We can just, uh, just drive Finbar to, um, you know, the portal entrance and, uh, we can then cord on over. It'll take us what four, six hours to get to the uh, physical portal location. I think that's how long it took. Yeah, I think so. Um, let me actually probably faster with my um, with my skill. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you got the fast car fast. Um, car. One thing I need to ask you out of game is has Finbar ever been to the cottage? No, that's why um, that's why Eddie is. Oh, he is not yet. Right, but we don't have the car here. We did not bring the car. Oh, gosh. <laughs> where, where are we going to find another vehicle? What happened to your original my, my poor, poor vehicle? The jeep is at the cottage. We Not at the jeep. I would the imagine. Jeep, I would imagine. Out of oh. game. I would imagine that the loader vehicle that the university had for me has probably been turned back in. Yeah. Yep. No, it, it's fine. It's fine. We'll we'll do this the legitimate way, and uh, Eddie is just going to um, call up uh, Wolf Security. Is uh, whoever his administrative assistant or ex executive assistant is there, and just. Uh, Request that a uh, company cart be delivered to the Tasty Oak. Right away. Um, I love this. <laughs> it'll it'll arrive. It'll arrive in about an hour. So you still have like some time to to chat or to plan if you want. While the GM will. Um, Look very quickly where the tomb is again. Um, mm, 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 mm. we done. We done. Uh, <laughs> okay, Taliesin was buried in Wales, but it was in. I need to remember. Oh yeah, the village of Tree Taliesin. That makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, I mean, by teleporting, you can happen. You know, you can arrive at any, um, any like publicly available door. Um. The little town of Tree Taliesin has um, very little in the ways of um, of like public venues. There's a pub that you can just you know come out of, let's say the bathroom doors of, if you wanted to teleport there. Um, there is a, a community hall and there is a chapel. That you could also probably use. That you remember seeing when you were there. And then, well, if you wanted to cross from there to... Uh, straight to Connaught in Ireland. <laughs> it's 300 miles. While I'll say yes, some of you can run on water. You might still get tired before you across the entire area. Just saying. Um, at some no. point, at some point, it will be completely possible. Like, don't worry about it. I know, I know. You're right. Okay. Um, How far can I toss someone? It, it's... <laughs> you, oh, do, no. do you think Eddie could launch D across No. The it's the throwing part. The come. It's the landing. The landing yeah. is. The landing is it. A... 
Okay. Um, just just checking very quickly. Um, now, okay. This is it's it's not going to be perfect, but um, let me see. It's Dublin. Stinky, you're stinky. And holy head. Okay, it's... Uh, thank you for not putting it in miles. Um, it's 75 miles. That's the no. closest between no. Ireland and uh, and the UK. Well, not the closest, I should say, but from where you are, thereabouts the closest. Um, I don't think it would be possible to run through it. Not yet, anyway. But I mean, hey, like last time, there's a ferry, so if you manage to find a car or anything, you can, you know, hijack another vehicle because you are dead set on stealing all the time. Um... But that could work. Anyway, it's up to you. It's feasible. Um, what What is your next step? What do you want to do so I can... I can get an idea of where you're going. I want to go see my dad. All right. I will go with her. Yeah, anyone is welcome to come with me. Um, my dad thinks my friends are cool. So, yes. I guess we can do that, or we can try to um, see if we can source any information out there. Maybe uh, make contact with uh, a wolf security branch that might be out there. Whoa, really? We got to learn of all the resources we have available, and uh, you know, maybe there's someone else who notices the eye who could give us some information. Okay, it's worth a try. Wolf Security, by the way, is an American company. Okay, well, do they have a branch or any contacts out there? They might have like contacts in the sense of you know, in the industry, you know, you know who the other. Companies are, or at least, you know, the CEO knew the CEO of other places. Um, so there is, like, there are security firms in, um, or security agencies, I should say, in uh, in Ireland, um, in the private sector. They could, like, your, your, uh, your administrative assistant can probably get you, like, a at least schedule like a phone call with one of them, if not an in-person meeting. That that could be possible. You just need to give her like a, you know, your availabilities, and then she'll try to find some find a moment that fits both you and the other person. Okay. Um, sorry. What was the name of the CEO of Wolf Security? Uh, I'm sorry, the uh, chair the chairperson of the board. Yeah, because I was going to say CEO was Olfer Stevenson. Uh, it's Margaret yeah. Sanders. Yeah, I think that... Uh, actually, you know what? Instead of calling the administrative assistant, we can Stop. move up the ladder a bit. Uh, Kieran, um, maybe you should contact Maggie and ask if there are any folks that they could connect us with over in Ireland. Sure. Absolutely. So, does she know me? Does she know that I am now in charge of this company? Um, she, I, I believe she would know you as um, <laughs> She knows Mr. Us. Dragon's Bane's uh, Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> translator, um, yeah. Translator slash uh, <laughs> Chief of Staff. <laughs> I mean, she would definitely remember you from the events of 
you know, oh, the yeah. meeting where the day where Ulfur threw someone through a wall. Right. Um. So you know, she won't she won't like hang up on you or anything. <laughs> so if you call Margaret Sanders, um, she will uh, let you know that they, while they do not have, you know, any any branches specifically in Ireland. Mm -hmm. They were, Ulfur at one point was looking at acquiring a company called Celtic Security Solution, which is based in uh, Dublin. You know, just uh, if she asks why, just consider it uh, us taking the initiative of doing a little goodwill tour to help repair the reputation of Wolf Security as we, uh, you know, continue our merger. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, no, she can get you, uh, an in-person tour of, uh, their, their main office in Dublin, um, when, when you want it, though. So we'll say, uh, maybe tomorrow? All right. So it's um, it's basically on the like outskirts of the main city, of like Dublin proper, proper. Um, she gives you like the directions and everything. Uh, it'll be fixed. It's going to be late afternoon, so you're not gonna have a lot of time. Um, but it is like about twenty minutes away from the airport, which you know, because she assumes that you're gonna fly to Dublin. Oh yeah, very convenient. So you'll have about maybe an hour with them. And uh, with that, you have your appointment settled. Um, how do you bring Finbar back to the house, though? Oh, the company car. Oh, yeah, right, company car. So you're going to drive... Um, what's your power again? What does it do? You imbue one legend and... Um, I imbue a vehicle with divine power, raising the scale of all speed-based actions by one. Yeah, so it goes at the speed of it. The speed of a uh, race car. So you basically cut the time in half... Um, You, um... Did we reach... race midnight? Huh? You can we definitely race midnight? race midnight. So what does this? All of a sudden, you're now Formula One. That's a gift. Um... You... Reach the house. Finbar, you will see this, this cottage for the first time. Um, I think we have the image in our Legend Keeper. Yeah, I've already, I've, I've already, already seen it. already seen it, yeah. So, it's a nice house, um, you know, log cabin, basically, by the, the side of a lake. Um, very cozy, very quiet. Um, you notice... There is a family of beavers swimming in the lake, very nonchalantly. Um, they are, however, rather large beavers, as in the size of a pony. I, do well, I the, biggest, the biggest is the size of a pony, I should say. Do I sense anything magical about them with my Oh, yeah, yeah, they're divine, yeah. Okay, so obviously it's not just because they're being well fed. No, that's uh, Winnie would point um, to the biggest beaver and say, "That's my son, Chapa." And uh, this, this is our house. Grand and stately place, that's for sure. I like the, I like the feel. It's got everything, I think, that you need. 
I'm sure it does, madame. And I walk in to and start just looking around. Uh, the rest of the group, you've been living in this house for a while. What would Finbar see when he comes in? If I remember correctly, in the common area, there's this um, one of those um, austere um, portraits of Eddie in a business suit uh, hanging over one of the walls. And uh, there's actually a little um, uh, Dirk Dastardly mustache uh, markered in on it. Um, there is suddenly a giant Lapras doll just uh, sitting there as well uh, on on the couch where warning usually sits. Hello. What's this? Oh, uh, that's a Pokemon. Uh, felt bad that you couldn't come with us to Japan and figured I would uh, bring you back a uh, souvenir. <gasps> it's for me? Yeah. It's I guess it is. so cute. What's its name? Uh, I believe they called that a Lapras. <gasps> it's perfect. Wait, morning photo photo time. <gasps> yes. Um, there we go. Hands deep the camera. Yeah, takes a photo with the big Lapras. It's perfect. There we go. I like that we're overlooking the two mannequins with like ancient Japanese armor. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it's like, nah. <laughs> ancient artifacts. Those are not going to no guess engagement. You. This will. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. You're right. I'm, somehow I have a feeling that Finbar would probably notice the, would see that, see the Lapras initially. Oh, another one of those things. Then he'll notice the armor and take a more interest in it. And the uh, giant lion's pelt that's just like draped over our couch. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the impenetrable lion's pelt. Still hurts, but impenetrable. So uh, as far as you're concerned, Finbar, one of the two pieces of armor is um, divine in origin. Mm -hmm. And so is the, the pelt. You recognize the pelt as being the pelt of a Nemean lion. Um, same type of oh. lion that uh, Hercules killed. That Hercules would have fought. Yeah, yeah. the, first, the so, first of his thirteen, the first of his labors was the Nemean lion. Yeah, and uh, then the armor you don't like. You don't instantly recognize the armor in the sense of like who it belongs to and everything, but you do. You do notice that it's like a at least over a thousand years old um and it's quite clearly it's the original material that's been kept intact over the years by virtue of the fact that it's imbued with divine power um but like you wouldn't know who like which member of the pantheon this armor must have belonged to um it's just very nice a very nice armor. Yes. So it hasn't taken you long to gather many souvenirs, and I can see pointing at the portrait that I'm glad none of this is going to your heads or anything. Well, I mean, if JD is around, um, or if he's not Karen inside, decides, yeah, he's not inside. So. You put both of those things on. We can. You can pretty much have anything happen to you. I think. He couldn't move, possibly. That's a pretty heavy pelt, actually. I go over I and try could. to pick it up. I go over and try to pick it up. The pelt? Yes, the pelt. Um, it is heavy AF. I'd, re I'd reach back behind my behind and grab a hold of S Slugger and hold it in one hand and use that to try to lift it up. Um. So... Basically, it's not that <coughs> you you realize that it is heavy regardless. Actually, it mm. is heavy, even if you were dotted with epic strength. Okay. Um, it's just made like that. Whoever holds it, or wears it, or lifts it, or whatever, 
Um, it's always cumbersome for them. Um, it's a thick pelt. And gotcha. uh, it's also intact. You know how often you'll have, you know, animal pelts, but you'll always have some little, like, tear or wear, right. especially where uh, the 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 skin met with, like, the paws mm -hmm. or the hooves or whatever of the animal. Right. Eventually uh, going to have some erosion of the skin. Yeah. Uh, or, like, you know, the person that skinned it might have made a mistake, like, cut too deep or, or what have you. Yeah. This one is pristine. I say it's been very well kept, if nothing else. Hopefully it's been well used by whoever carries it. I mean, right now it's used as a throw on a on a couch. It used to be a... Uh... Shit, what was JD using it uh, for? As? Isn't it just like a carpet? It's a car yeah, it was a carpet <laughs> in his living room. Like... No one has used it for its I intended am. purposes. So All far. right. Oh, so, uh, Hercules, if you could only see what your handiwork is being done with now. Um, JD would come in at that uh, at that moment and just shout out, "That wasn't his. That was mine. There's more than one of me in Lion." And uh, he puts down next to the door. Um, a, a quiver full of rustic looking arrows. Like, not modern looking arrows, I should say. Like, they're mm -hmm. not made of, like, plexiglass and, right. and all that. I'm gonna go take a shower. Bye. So I take it this is his then. It's, it's more like hours well, the... when he says. I mean, Morning and I have been sitting on it for longer than he has, I think. That's true. Well, he was just stepping on it. I can. T oh, then I can tell for sure Then you two are probably putting it to much better use. <laughs> it looks like better to better use. Looks like the. Looks like this pelt is worn better than he has, so to speak. Oh. He's a good guy. And the fact is, is that he is basically one of our one of the best defenses we could find for this cottage. Well, we are absent. Uh, excellent. All right, that's good. Well, it looks like you've done real good with the place here. It's a good, nice, nice place to hide away from the rest of the world. Yeah. So, um, you know, just uh, check out your room, make sure everything is ready, and then uh, we can all go to Ireland. And the moment that uh, Eddie says that, we're going to take a break. But I'll, just before that, a room materializes with everything that Finbar would like to have in a room. And because of presence of magic, you're like instantly aware of the properties of this house. Not just the house, but the entire place you're in. Right. Um, anything that you wish, it, within reason, all right? Um, anything that you want will materialize. As if it was always there. So if you're like, hey, let's go barbecue. And there were no barbecues here before. Now there's one. Because it just makes sense all of a sudden. Gotcha. So we're going to take a quick break. Because I realize it's like 2.30 already. Oh, shit. It's 2.30. Okay. Players. Five minute break in case we need it. Uh. You know, drinks, food, whatever. We're going to come back very quickly uh, and teleport to Wales upon our return. See you in a few minutes.
Hey, we're back at the house. And uh, we, a plan was made. And the five of you, are you bringing JD or uh, Winnie along? Because they not won't seem invite like themselves. Wants... No. JD is content watching TV and eating should... Hot Pockets. You know what? We should really go back to his apartment at some point and grab the two gophers to, like, you know, you can watch the... Oh, God, no. This there is... was more than just the two gophers. There just was bring like the two gophers. Those, those are the ones that D made a, made a meaningful connection with because they, they're probably still watch. There's The TV is probably still on and they're still facing it. <laughs> um, yeah. Unfortunately, they cannot move by themselves. Oh, yeah, maybe it's just us. Yeah, because I think, yeah, JD does not seem. Um, so you open the door to the cottage and vroom, teleport the tree Taliesin. Does Finbar find himself suddenly able to do this as well? Uh, yes, so the way it works is you needed to, the first time you get to this, it's called a Terra Incognita, but that's something... Mm -hmm. Out of game information. Um, the the like specific property of this one is you need for the first time you need to physically reach the uh, they call it an axis mundi. So it's like the door, the actual mm -hmm. place where it's anchored in the world. From that point on, you can teleport any doorway. But mechanically, here's how it works you need to imbue a point of legend. So you temporarily temporarily lose a point of legend. Okay. Uh, and by the way, your legend is at two, which I forgot Thank to you. mention. Um, so... Got it. Yeah, you, you temporarily lose it. So if you had no legend points left because you burned them all to use some of your powers or whatever, um, then you're screwed. You can't teleport until you regain your legend. Otherwise, lose it temporarily... Open any mundane door. Once you step through, you reappear on the grounds uh, where the cottage is. Okay. Cool. And the same goes for the opposite. If you leave the house, you can just decide anywhere in the world, so long as you have seen the place. Even if it's just a picture. Mm -hmm. You just need we to can, have seen the place. We can fill this cabin with giant Pokemon stuffed animals. Is this what you're, you're what you're going to use your God's given powers? <laughs> Listen, I don't know. Find collectibles. I don't think you understand how difficult it it's, is to find one of those Snorlax beanbags. <laughs> that's okay. minor okay. on like the things that we could take advantage is just getting good good stuffed animals. Right? Yeah. Like Speedy was like, okay, do we get a PS Five or do we get this life size Slowpoke pillow? <laughs> like. <laughs> Um, like there's a choice in the matter, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, you can okay. do a lot with the PS5, I'm just saying. I know, that's what I say, but also slow poke plushy life-size, same price. <laughs> okay, that's scary. Um, <laughs> so, all right. Five of you, back in Wales. Finbar? In morning. Morning, that's the first time you feel it, Finbar. It's becoming familiar. This gnawing feeling at the back of your your mind. There's something wrong around here. And if you look over to the west, you can barely see the faint outline of some red light. Like the sun was rising in the wrong place. Now, morning, you finally understand it's not the sun that you saw the other day. It was like the first, basically, when you uh, when you went to Ireland the first time. It was like the beginning of the eye appearing, so it looked just like the sun. But now you can see that it's not like the yellow white light; it's pretty much reddish. Oh, I do not like that. You see it, you feel it, or more importantly, you feel it. Oh, so bad. All right. 
you get used to it, but then again, you never get used to it. Oh, thanks. I hate it. That was me clicking the wrong button. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> the threat is suddenly say, much more present. I to see if the bail or all of a sudden Alien showing up wolves. or it's just hoo hooling with the bad belly. Is. <laughs> that was just me. It wasn't an eye, it was the werewolf spaceship. <laughs> yes. Um, but no, the uh, five of you reappear in Tree Talison. You remember the way to get to Talison's tomb. Uh, basically have to either hop a few fences, run across a few uh, farms to get there, or take just walk the road and go that huge like, detour to get to uh, the tomb itself. If you're not in a hurry, you can go through the, the, the street, the road. It's going to take you about an hour on foot to get there. Nothing, nothing more. When you arrive at the tomb, it's the same as it was the other day. You know, this sort of stone cairn. Uh, you know that there's a, a secret entrance underneath, but... Even after your first visit, like it doesn't look like anyone has ever been near this place, whereas or has disturbed the place really. Mm hmm. Okay, I will um, immediately imbue a point of legend to summon my dad. Um, he appears like materializes out of thin air. He's sitting on the cairn, uh, legs crossed, just, you know, leaning back on his hands and looking at the sky. Oh, I have to not hit stuff. Uh, and turns to you and oh, morning. Morning, morning. Oh, yeah. What's up? It's morning. Oh, it's morning! Uh -huh. <laughs> I look over at Dia, I was like, is this what they call a dad joke? I think so, yes. Yes. Close enough. I'm learning internet lingo. You just, you, you, you like, when you say that, he's like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> And, and he just glances over at Karen and just notices the expression on his face and just nudges him. He's like, come on. Be nice. Hi. What? Yeah, hi. Uh, how, I missed how? you. I know it's been like a week. How's the garden? How is everything? How is everyone? It's been more than a week. I mean in there. Um, right, I didn't really think about that. We... We put some measures in place. Um, try to forbid people from going into the woods. Uh, it's, uh... It's getting very dangerous. I don't know what's happening on the other islands, but... We saw one of them burn and sink. Some of the older spirits, especially especially those of the warriors, um, they think it's the Fomorians. That they're back. But that doesn't make sense because they don't have access to the garden. They're not... More sense than you think. Morning looks over at Finbar and says, uh, Dad, this is a professor friend of mine, Finbar Odukta, and Finbar, this is Taliesin, my dad. He bows, um, and I bow just, just, as, just as ceremoniously back. I've read of and have read your works. 
Oh. Very impressive. I thank you. Uh, it, you it mentioned nothing. You mentioned the Fomorians. Yes. What would you think if I told you that right now the eye of Baylor is staring at the Isle of Ireland? He turns to to look like to the west and um, you notice uh, morning like just the faintest disappointment across his face. It lasts for a, a quarter of a second, but you know you've spent an eternity with Taliesin. Um, regardless of whether or not you're you're related to him, you know his his ticks. You know his poker face, and that's what he's doing right now. He turns back and says, "I don't, I don't see anything." What is it over there? And he points to the west. That's where the Emerald Isle should be. Correct? That is Why? correct. You do. Go ahead. Uh, Morning just like, just, just a moment and like pulls uh, Talius in the side and just says, you can't see it? There is a, a sadness in his eyes. There's a sadness in his eyes, but a smile on his face. Like they they both tell a different story. And he says, Oh, everything seems fine. Why are you acting weird? I don't see anything. As in, I don't see anything. Do you see me? I, I see, I see you, I see the field, I see the farms over there. Okay. But beyond that, There's just nothing now. It's it's like like I was disconnected. Maybe I've spent too long in these United Kingdom. Okay. Um and morning rejoins the group. Um uh, she'll point to where in the sky the eye is at this point um, and kind of guide Taliesin's hand in that direction so that he can point to it too, even if he can't see it. So I guess my question to you, Mr. Taliesin, is this. Mm -hmm. How are you aware of any Fomorians that are still left? I'm not aware of anything. I, it's, like I said, have you heard? Warriors. Hmm? Have you heard? Or is it just the, the gossipy talk among old war horses that you're referring to? Gossipy talk, I mean. Bran was never one to gossip or like uh, one to uh, seek fights. And he's half Omori. Um, so, I mean, if anything, I would trust his um, I would trust his guts. He says it's the Morian, it probably is. Um, f 
from what I remember of them. And I wasn't there when uh, I was. Yes, that would have been happened. That would have been before your time. Yes, I I understand that. Um, but I've never heard of any tales of them setting fields ablaze, or 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 annihilating the dead. It's like they're trying to. Like they're trying to prevent the dead from passing on, from moving on. Which isn't exactly their style. They're more the in they're more of a in your face warrior than stealth. If 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 I remember the legends correctly. Uh, the legends don't lie. Um Bran was a very um Was a very bellicose king, and then was not one to, you know, torch the fields and salt the earth type of person. No, he was not. So he was more of a take for him, take whatever he could for himself and keep expanding. Yeah. And. Um, I mean, I think if, if, and please don't tell him that, but I think the most political movie ever made in his entire life is to marry his sister to, uh, 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 ah, what's his name? Becomes a king. Um, Matoluk? I think that was his name. Starting to lose pieces of the stories. Um, yeah. Uh, With my palace of knowledge, would I remember the would I remember the name? Uh, yes, you would definitely. Um, it sounds like this. Matoluk. Matolush. And he is. Thank you, Google. He is the. Mythic first king of Ireland. Yeah. Um, at the very, very beginning of everything. Um, and uh, things went bad for him. Went, went very wrong for him at some point. Uh, in part because Bran um, uh, um Bran married his sister without, like, informing the rest of the family. And, um... He... It creates a bunch of issues, and then after he's married and goes back to Ireland, he uh, treats his wife like crap. Um... And, uh, which... Uh, leads... Uh, his uh, Branwen, Bran's sister, to send a message out to Bran, and Bran comes into Ireland and just wipes everyone. It, uh, yeah. So, if if anything, that was probably his least violent move was to just agree to marry someone. Without their consent. So it makes you wonder are the Fomorians up to something or is someone taking their power and getting ready to use it for their own? The Fomorians would not listen to any one of you or me or, or any human. They're older, more ancient. Um, I think the word that has been thrown around these f last few ages, um, and I think morning you've heard of it, the, the, the term Titan spawn. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, a few of the like, more occult-oriented dead uh, tend to throw that word around. Titan's fallen. S- d- the same way as your, I, I believe... God spawns. That would make them your cousins, I think, somewhat. At least, at least second, at least first says cousin twice removed. Something like as that. As they say in certain parts of the United States. Yes, the the people that you would not invite to a family reunion. Exactly. And from what I understood, um, while the Fomorians are, are Titan spawns, they're not the only ones. There are others everywhere in the world. Um, you know, old, old legends, the tales that humans would tell around the campfire, scare one another. Yeah, that sort of thing. A- anyway, um... To answer your question, Morning, um, I'm as well as can be, despite things going to shit. Mm. Okay, so we have a limited amount of time before the garden potentially goes up in flames and more spirits disappear forever and no one gets to pass on. Yay! Yeah, I bet your mom would be pissed. Oh, she would be. She hasn't said anything, has she? No. But we needed something else to do, right, everyone? I just kind of look around like, we've just been hanging out for a little while, starting a business and whatnot. We needed more... Stuff of legend. Trust me, if we're dealing with what I think we're dealing with, this is far beyond legend that we're going to be dealing with. Oh, great. Let's do it. I have a sword. These are, these are the legends beyond the legends. So um. we become legends ourselves. Isn't that what you're becoming? I mean, I, I'm not too sure how me, things work, but a yeah. few um, few of the more recently uh, arrived people oh. in the garden talk about um, the gal with the sword? Uh, yes, I do have a sword. They say that you are an influence on others. Yes. A social media influencer, it's a long story. It took me days to learn, but I'll tell you about it sometime. Maybe once we get you safe, for sure. Social media influence. Yes. These are words that you string together, but I, they don't mean anything. I know. It, it's a long story. Like I said, the world has really changed since you were here that well, i'm glad to, that you are safe daughter and i'm glad to see that the rest of you are safe too um we're gonna figure this out we have a next stop and we'll probably learn more there but you've helped and it was good to see you. It's always good to see you. Thanks for visiting twice in such a short period of time. I I could get used to that. Okay, do. Because I'll be back soon. Okay. Um, I'll head back to the garden if you don't need me. Sure. Thank you. Bye. Anytime. Bye, morning. Bye, friends of morning. Bye, professor. Safe travels. And he fades. 
like like I... mist on the wind. Morning just turns back to the group and says, "All right, where to next?" And that's where <sighs> we're going to end today. That was a good one-liner. There's two minutes left on the clock. <laughs> so, um, thank you everyone for coming today. We're getting back in the swing of things. And uh, slowly unveiling the other... Um... You're starting a lot of threads. I can't wait until they all end at the same time and everything blows in your face. That's great, gonna be awesome. great. Can't wait. <laughs> um, but yes, awesome. So, um, everyone, uh, if you have anything that you would like to uh, pitch anywhere that we can find you this upcoming week before our next game next Friday, uh, Friday, Saturday, please uh, do so. If you have links to put, put them in chat. We're going to go around the overlay, same order as we did the intros, beginning with Kieran. Uh, I am Hannah, Hanimation Art on Twitter, Hanimation Studios on Instagram, and you can find me and Danino back here next Thursday, 8 p.m., 8.30 p.m. EST, to play some Sentinels of the Multiverse. Be sure to tune in because that is a very exciting uh, game that we're playing and we, we're just getting started and we're already in a lot of trouble. And next Friday is uh, back here also 8.30 p.m. with Danino, Cyberpunk Red. So be sure to tune into that too, because that's going to be pew pew, big, exciting, lots, lots happening. And then Saturday, every Saturday here, 1 p.m. EST playing Sentinels. So, you know, come back, see us again. Good stuff. Up next, Finbar. I am Kentucky Hake, KY Hake. You can find me here on Twitch, a couple of nights a week doing some gaming streams. Currently, I've restarted streaming, so I'm going back to the what I love to do most is the LEGO game series. We just recently started LEGO's The Incredibles, which has been a very fun play so, play so far. Other nights of the week, I'm doing my Skyrim role plays with Eric Rosine, a character who's more Nord than the Nords, and he's got his four childhood companions with him who are now grown up as well, the four horsemen of the Nord, and yes, they are named at, they are each of the characters is somewhat named after the four horsemen of NWA fame, as they are now traveling the lands of Falskar. We're exp we're exploring that deal, that mod DLC add on there. And then hopefully later on you'll find me here on Saturday on Saturdays as well. And then later on Saturday nights, usually around 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern time US is Grappler's Keep, my WWE 2K20 universe. We're number GMs G. DMs and TTT RGB players across the Twitch universe compete in a ring that we lovingly call the Dice Tray. Four of the people here on the stream, including myself, are members of the cast there, including one of them, Hannah, who currently holds our Women's Hunters Mark belt, which she will be defending on our next stream, which will either happen tonight. It may happen tonight. It may not happen until next Saturday. I haven't quite decided yet. Depend I've got to see what how the schedule works out, but You'll, you'll see Hannah defending her belt. You'll see Renee trying to break her maiden and win her first match and a premiere of Somebody New as well. So to, otherwise, Cleric by Day, RPG Fanboy by Night. Next, and Nino. As a, How's it going? Eddie, I keep naming your characters. I should name your character. Hey, uh, my name's Anino. You can find me on Twitter at Anino Gaming. In addition to the shows that uh, Hannah just mentioned, uh, you can find me tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Time over on the other doc channel for uh, the second episode of our second season of Invisible Sun. There is um, a lot going on. It's super surreal. Uh, the best way I can describe our campaign is basically a bunch of... Uh, uh, a bunch of wizards going around having brunch and occasionally solving mysteries in between meals. So um, tune in for that. Uh, I think that's about it right now. So stay tuned for more. On the other side of the overlay, I'll skip myself. I'll start with D. Hey, I'm um, Lynn, uh, flying surfs on Twitter uh, and place every, every place else. Uh, you catch my art and you'll be seeing me next on Tuesday on a uh, couple press for 
more uh, Scarlet Citadel. We found a mysterious, we, from a child, we found a mysterious portal and we just fought some men and we're probably gonna go into a dungeon at some point. And on Wednesday for um, the finale of um, Cyber the B Battalion on uh, Praxcore at Desmoforo's channel, there were some wild revelations regarding family members and I can't wait to see how that, how that concludes. And we're probably gonna have a mech battle, which should be awesome, I can't wait. And on Friday, on um, paper, on um, Weep the Tail, it is uh, where our uh, Dragon Age game, and our four agents have um, our mission has not gone great. We have lost Liliana, and uh, we are now criminals. So great first episode. So can we see where that goes? <laughs> um, and last but not least, morning. Hi, my name is Renee Rhodes. I've played Morning today. Uh, Kiri Speedy Rhodes has been the one that you've seen around uh, on camera. She is part cute, part chaos right now. Um, and uh, I, we had a lot of fun today. Um, and I'm honestly a little tired. I do a lot of podcasts. You can find all of the information uh, on my Twitter, uh, Ray Dian. Are, and uh, I'll be back hopefully next week. There's a lot going on personal life stuff, but uh, if not, then I'll see you soon regardless. So, thanks. And uh, I am Simon at Wondering DM. Thank you everyone for coming in today. Uh, thank you players for taking time off of your Saturday afternoons to come play Scion with me. Um, we'll be back next week, 1 p.m. Eastern again, and uh, on Sunday, so tomorrow night at uh, 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern, I'll be over on Praxagorathus Mephoria, reprising the role of uh, Vashard as we uh, finally unveil the one-on-one uh, -on -one flashback session of back when uh, he was a younger soldier um, fighting the undead of Kern. We'll uh, also uh, play D&D here on Monday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, then on Thursday for Sentinels of the Multiverse, Friday for the finale of our uh, Season 4 of Cyberpunk, and uh, Cyan, whatever happens in Ireland happens next week. So thank you everyone for coming, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.